to move a motion for urgent public matter of urgent public importance on the title multi-partisan motion on the inappropriate discrimination against the House of Representatives and the presentation of the chamber as inferior to the Senate. With two, I would like to seek the, the leave of the House to suspend its relevant rule to consider this motion to be of urgent public importance. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. That the National Assembly of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is constitutionally established as a bicameral legislature comprising two equal chambers. The Senate and the House of Representatives are stipulated in Section 4 of the 99th Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as amended with both chambers operating within a framework that ensures the legislative independence and equality of each. Further aware, Mr. Speaker, sir, that Section 47 of the 1999 Constitution provides for the establishment of the National Assembly consisting of a Senate and a House of Representatives, each of which plays distinct but complementary roles in the legislative process of this country. Concerned that there is an ongoing and inappropriate culture of discrimination against the House of Representatives, often portrayed as inferior to the Senate, through languages that consistently refer to the Senate as the upper chamber and the House of Representatives as a lower chamber. Mr. Speaker, this terminology misrepresents the legal status of both chambers and diminishes the House standing. Worried by the growing trend where, Mr. President, where the President of the Senate is referred to as the Chairman of the National Assembly, which inaccurately implies a hierarchical structure between the two chambers, contrary to the spirit of the Constitution, and undermines the authority of the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Neither the Constitution nor the standing orders of both chambers recognize the position of a chairman of the National Assembly. This title has no legal basis and undermines the fundamental principle of bicameral parity. For that concern that this discriminatory practice was once again evidenced during the recent Confirmment of national honors on the leadership of the National Assembly. Honorable Kawoji, you are distracting our leader. Mr. Speaker, while expressing our gratitude to Mr. President for recognizing and honoring the leadership of the National Assembly, we note that the confirmment of the title of Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger on the President of the Senate and the confirmation of the commander of the Federal Republic, CFR on the Speaker of the House of Representatives, and Deputy President of the Senate, perpetuates the inappropriate subordination of the Speaker to the President of the Senate. The House notes that the Chief Justice of Nigeria, who is lower in protocol, in protocol ranking that the Speaker of the House of Representatives was also awarded the title of GCN further exemplifying this culture of discrimination against the leadership of the House. The House recognizes that the Constitution, in promoting a balance in an equal bicameral legislature, clearly provides that bills passed by one chamber must be concurred with by the other in the same form for them to become law, thus affirming the equal status of both chambers as an essential component of the legislative process emphasizes that while the Constitution assigns specific responsibilities to the Senate, such as confirming center, center presidential appointments, it implies greater authority for the House of Representatives over appropriation and the power of the purse. These deep seat roles are designed to maintain a system of check and balances within the legislative arm, rather than establishing the superiority of one chamber over the other. For that recognizes that the House of Representatives and the Senate are two distinct but equal components of the legislative branch and their leaders, the Speaker and the President of the Senate, Mr. Speaker, are co-heads of this branch, each playing a unique role in advancing legislative functions. This distinct dual leadership is a unique arrangement in our government system that must be respected at all times. For that note, 
that the Enabling Act establishing institutions under the National Assembly, including the National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies, the National Assembly Service Commission, the National Assembly Library, and the National Assembly Budget and Research Office, clearly reflect the co-leadership status of the Speaker and the President of the Senate, thereby validating the equality of both chambers. Note that the National Honors Act of 1964 does not explicitly prescribe the conferment of specific honors, such as the Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger for the President of the Senate or the Commander of the Order of the Federal, of the Niger, of the Federal Republic for the Speaker of the House of Representatives. And these distinctions are rooted in customary practice rather than statutory requirements. Further note that the honor of Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger is not restricted to any particular office or individual, but can be awarded to any distinguished Nigerian deemed deserving by the President, as evidenced by the recent confirmation of GSON on Dr. Ngozi Okojo Iwela by former President Muhammad Buhari. This House acknowledges the flexibility inherent in the national honor system and the prerogative of the President in the allocation of such decisions. Mr. Speaker, the House resolves to one, call attention to the ongoing discriminatory practice of referring to the Senate as the upper chamber and the House of Representatives as the lowest chamber, as well as portraying the Speaker as subordinate to the President of the Senate. Such references undermine the equal status of both chambers as established by the Constitution of the Federal Republic, Nigeria, and diminish the standing of the House of Representatives in the legislative process. Secondly, I found that the House of Representatives is an independent equal chamber of the National Assembly, and the Speaker is a co-head of the legislative arm of government, alongside the President of the Senate. Recognize the Speaker of the House of Representatives as co-chairman of the National Assembly in all respects. I request that all references to the leadership of the National Assembly reflect this equality. To call on the government, to call on all government institutions, officials, and the media to take cognizance of language and titles that suggest a hierarchical structure between the Senate and the House of Representatives or their respective leaders. Mandate the relevant House committees to liaise with the presidency and propose amendment to the National Honors Act of 1964 to appropriately recognize the Speaker of the House of Representatives as co-head of the National Assembly and accordingly confer the National Honor of GSON upon the Speaker, ensuring parity in recognition with the President of the Senate. This should be accomplished before the formal declaration by Mr. President. Urge Mr. President to uphold the spirit of bicameral equality as enshrined in the Constitution when making decisions and recommendations that concern the leadership of the House of the National Assembly. Direct the clerk of the National Assembly to ensure that all communications, orders, and publications from the National Assembly henceforth refer to both the Speaker of the House of Representatives and the President of the Senate as co heads of the National Assembly. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, the House of Representatives reaffirmed its commitment to the constitutional principle of equality between the chambers of the National Assembly are calls for the elimination of all practices, titles, and references that suggest otherwise. The Speaker of the House is a co-leader of the legislative arm of government, and this must be recognized and respected in all respects. Mr. Speaker, I, my humble self, I so move on behalf of 248 other members representing the eight political parties in this chamber. I so move, Mr. Speaker, sir. No, no, I said I move on behalf. I have 247 signatures here. Mr. Speaker, I wish to amend that the motion has further signatures to it and it is on behalf of the 360 members, Mr. Speaker, sir. Noted. You can. Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, this is not about Taji Jean Abbas. This is about the fourth person in the protocol of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. This is about the equal chamber as enshrined in the, uh, according to 40, uh, section 47 of the Federal Republic Constitution of Nigeria. Mr. Speaker, the two chambers, House of Representatives and the Senate, as clearly provided in the Constitution, work to create laws for the good governance of Nigeria. 
I mean, the speaker, in accordance with the protocol of this country, the speaker is the fourth in protocol. The CGN comes after. Today, the CGN is given the award, the honor of GCON. I think there is some, some mismatch, some mix-up. Mr. Speaker, I could remember a Kwanji Uwela. She was a minister in this country. She was given the honor of GCON. I don't think she has attained the status of the fourth person in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Mike Adenuga is a businessman, private man, private person, private citizen. He's given the honor of GCON. So also, Ali Kodangote, a businessman, profiting, given the honor of GCON. We all make laws to govern their businesses and thrive. Mr. Speaker, I could remember on the 23rd of September 2021, the, the, the president, chief of staff to the president, Femi Bajabe Amila, was the speaker in the Ninth Assembly. There was this issue. He wrote to the Minister of Special Duties in order to correct this abnormality. We know the president is a listening president. We know the president is no shy. He does not shy away from going back to correct the wrong. Mr. Speaker, the House of Representatives accords the honor of GCON. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I remain Baba Jimmy Benson, representing the general, the gender-friendly people of the Kurdu Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, this motion cannot have come at a better time. And I thank the 360 members who sponsored this motion for putting democracy right. Injustice to one is injustice to all. This injustice has gone on for too far, for too long. It is not something that has happened only on this administration, but it's an institutional uh, error that has festered for too long. Mr. Speaker, I want to remind members that when order of protocol is being read, the Mr. Speaker comes at number four, before the CJN of Nigeria. But how come the CGN of Nigeria gets the GCON honor and our speaker gets the CFR honor? Again, when I go to comparative analysis and compare with the bastion of democracy where we copied our um, chair and system of government from the United States of America. Mr. Speaker, in the line of succession in America, if something happens to the president, and the vice president together. Members, guess who is in line to be the president of America? It is not the Senate president, neither is it the leader of the Senate. The appropriate person in America is the Speaker of the House of Representatives. So I urge members to please pass this motion with the spirit of light, and that this gap, gray area, lacuna, be investigated by the executive, and I'm sure they will come to the conclusion that something has gone wrong somewhere. So I thank you all members, and I pray that this motion is passed with the speed of light. Thank you. Honorable colleagues, I remain Engineer Akarachi Amadi Orisha Matosa of Tiosa. I represent the good people of Umbitoli Keduru Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I am from Imo State. Mr. Speaker, speaking as a youth, speaking as someone that understands the bias of discrimination, I would like to speak to our honorable colleagues to realize that the House of Representatives 
is the backbone of this democracy. 360 members sit in these chambers, and there is one man that has been able to keep this house in check, and that position is none other than the Speaker of the House of Representatives. And the executive... Please, a point of correction. Yes, sir. It's not me. It's the institution. It's the Speaker. Please don't talk about me. It is not about who is uh, Mr. occupying, I think. Mr. Speaker, I beg your pardon. I'm very certain I did not mention the... I didn't mention Dr. Tajuddin Abbas, PhD. I mentioned the Speaker of the House of Representatives that sits and leads 360 members that were duly elected by the people of Nigeria. Mr. Speaker, in our constituencies, we are the ones that the people cry to. I do not remember the last time that our people went to look for the senator. I know that they come to see the House of Reps members. So Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I seek for all members here to lend our voice, both in this chamber, to support this motion that the House of Reps should be treated as equal, if not superior, because of the numbers we possess to the Senate. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Oforji uh, Abonsis Woboku is my name. Representing Yenigua Kolokmo Pokuma Fera constituency, I'm from Baesta State. Mr. Speaker, my heart bleeds, rising from the fact that this parliament that have contributed immensely towards the survival of our democracy, our economy, Today, today, my heart bleed. Here in Nigeria, we operate a bicameral legislature. Bicameral legislature means that the red chamber and the green chamber, they are equal. I'm hearing that the House of Representatives the speaker, the speaker is not Tajuddin Abbas. We are talking about the speaker of the House of Representatives. It's not about you as an individual. It's about parliament. It's about the Green Chamber. Hearing the news of the senior president giving GCON, which is a good thing. We also expect that the same way in the Federal House of Representatives. A reason being that we are operating a bicameral legislature. When it comes to budget, the role of the House of Representatives, everybody knows that this House play a more crucial role than the Senate. We are not making comparison because this is a bicameral legislature. It's not about you, it's about all of us, the 360. We are not speaking, we are not speaking as individual, we are speaking in unison. The position of the 360. It's about protecting parliament, that there is issue with our uh, Green Chamber in terms of the last honor that was given by the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Looking at the, the, the promotion of the Chief Judge who was just a few days sworn in, it, 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 it gives some of us heartbreak to hear this sad news that this house, the speaker of parliament, the speaker of the people, the speaker of Nigeria is honored with 
CFRO, while the chief judge of Nigeria was honored with G-O-N. G-C-O-N. G-C-O-N. Mr. Speaker, it is the wish of this House that we appeal to the executive to see reason with this House that have been very supportive to all their bills in spite of all the humiliation, embarrassment sometimes we receive from Nigeria. We have been very patriotic to the executive and we expect that honor to be given to this parliament. Thank you and God bless all of us. Eastern Central and Igwebe Ferra constituency. Mr. Speaker, I rise this morning on behalf of my constituents to wholeheartedly support this motion. Mr. Speaker, as said by my colleagues, it is not about the person, it's about this great institution. Mr. Speaker, we operate a bicameral legislature, and whatever is good for the red chambers is as well good for the green chambers. We are crying out and saying that whatever injustice that have been done to this parliament be corrected. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Federal Constituent Plato State, by the grace of God, member of this parliament. Mr. Speaker, respected colleagues, first, I want to give gratitude to God and appreciate the person or the persons that brought this issue into discussion for consideration of the parliament. I also have heard some of the contribution. I want to appreciate what Honorable Sada, Soli, and other colleagues mentioned. And to make a clear point, sir, from the constitutional point of view, House of Representatives have more powers in terms of dispensing our own duties because the power of appropriation is based in us. And two, there's nothing, we are not subservient to any other legislative arm. We are supposed to be apart in terms of functions. And I think where we are getting it wrong and where Nigerians are getting it wrong, each time there are matters, they say president or chairman of the National Assembly. It's not done to the Constitution. It's not in, in place in any place. And this has given rise and occasion to some of the things that are happening now. And I want to mention specifically what Honorable Sada mentioned. Last time when this thing happened, in leadership then of the Ninth Assembly, we sat, discussed, and made up our point to say that is not right, and even advised that we return the honor uh, uh, that was awarded. And I think a letter was communicated. What we expect is follow up to that letter for them to do the writing. In fact, when the list was released, the first thing I can tell you for sure and free was to go through and run down of the people that were awarded such with honors. And when I saw that, I said, hmm, we are still to, in the same old place. It's like the people who are supposed to be writing have not done it. And I think it's about our own institution, uh, like it's been mentioned. We must rise to the occasion. It's not executive. There is a committee responsible for that. And that committee is headed by a very senior and honorable person. And I believe he will listen to it. And that is Justice, Honorable Justice Tilly Bagi. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, respect colleagues, I think we need to write officially our resolution to communicate it to the, to, to the, past, uh, to the group handling that. Uh, 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 this is being done under the supervision of one of us who is a minister for special duties, and that is Honorable Gisalo. I do not expect them not to do the writing. And I believe that as we write, they will do the writing. Uh, mistakes could come from uh, anywhere, and now it's for, for us to write the mistake and correct it so that the, the, the correcting will be done. The speaker, respect colleagues, I want to lend my voice and uh, support for the movements of this motion and the need for us to communicate our resolution, calling their attention. We are not in competition with any other person, but we are saying let the writing be done in terms of our placement in the society. Like it has been mentioned, number four citizen cannot come after number five citizen. Uh, we are a very a different, distinct system. And I want to appreciate it, Mr. Speaker, respectfully, that not more than two weeks ago, but two weeks ago, former presiding officers met Mr. President. And I believe he has tremendous respect for this. In fact, our meeting with him, 
that they further strengthen my belief in his own uh, uniqueness in terms of belief for democratic tenets. And I don't think with his approval and uh, such thing will happen. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the opportunity to speak. Deliver ourselves on this matter as all of us have agreed in principle. To save our time, we know that Mr. Speaker is number four citizen in this country. And if you look at that hierarchy, I think the, the CJN, I don't even know the number it belongs to. So how can a CGM be GCON and number four, who is ahead of that office, is CFR? That's one. For the public to know that this house is not subservient or inferior to the Senate, from our lawmaking process, there is no single chamber that can make a law and it become a law finally. There must be concurrence from either the Senate or from the House of Representatives. This is a signal to show to those who are making this process that Senate alone cannot stand on its own to make law and it becomes law. And House alone cannot stand on its own to make law and it becomes law. So that means they are at par. So I want to put it to them and let it go right away to them that the two houses are equal. So I want to also beg all my colleagues because of our time, if we are talking more about this, we will water down the motion. So as we have all agreed in principle, let us take it like this, that Speaker of House of Representatives is number four position and is equal to the Senate. This is my take. Thank you, honorable colleagues. I represent Ibadan Northwest, Southwest Federal Constituency of your state. Mr. Speaker, thank you for yielding the floor to me. What is fair is fair. And let's call a spade a spade. Mr. Speaker, I think part of the issue is this number four thing. Calling 3A and 3B might not necessarily be a bad one. But I think the mentality needs to be changed. I, so if my memory served me right, sometimes in the night assembly, we went through the same thing. We had this discussion, and we thought this would have been addressed. Mr. Speaker, it means equity and justice still need to be addressed. I would like to submit that every single member speaking for their federal constituency need to sign in favor of this change because we, we are not speaking for you, Mr. Speaker. We are speaking for this institution. This institution is bigger than any one single person. And because of this, I heard the submission of all my colleagues. I align totally with all of your submission. And I think we need to address it for the very last time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for yielding the floor. Thank you, President Hiro Bebeji, Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, I'm from uh, Kano State. Uh, Mr. Speaker, let me quickly thank uh, the mover of this uh, motion. Uh, very commendable. And uh, I have always uh, showed my concern about uh, this uh, miss normal in the National uh, Assembly. Uh, we just need to be uh, a bit uh, careful uh, because what we want to do, we're doing it for the institution. We don't want a situation where the next minute the press will take it that the House of Representatives is asking for a title for the speaker. So it's a wider issue. And we want the narrative to get to the public in the way that it should be. Now, there is no disparity between the Senate and the House of Representatives. But over the years, a wrong perception and a wrong impression has been created. And we need to correct that immediately. Now, even in our presentation, you will hear some members still saying number four citizens. 
when you are talking about number four, you've already brought down the speaker to number four. That is the first argument that somebody who is against it will bring to you. So, number one, part of the corrections that you've asked for, the constitutional correction about the order of protocol, it has to be number three citizens, the Senate President and the Speaker. We have to find a way to do away with this idea of upper chamber and lower chamber. There is nothing like upper chamber and lower chamber. The whole essence of the Senate is equality. But the wider representation is with the House of Representatives, which is based on landmass and most importantly, population. So if you are talking about the better representation and the better picture of what the National Assembly stands for, it is the House of uh, Representatives. In the immediate, of course, actions should be taken. Not that we are even begging. Or anybody who does it is not doing us a favor. And I also want to give them the benefit of doubt. I do not believe that they've denied the House of Representatives. Perhaps it's oversight. And so we are reminding them to uh, confer the speaker, any speaker, anybody that has become a speaker in the House of Representatives, in the present, I don't know whether it will include the past, but of course the future should be accorded that, uh, that uh, uh, hierarchy. But lastly, uh, Mr. Speaker, you also have very important duties that are shifted to the Senate alone. You talk about the very important responsibility of uh, screening uh, appointments. I do not understand why we could leave it to only the Senate, to screen your ministers. I actually believe, yes, they're doing a good job, but you have a more robust engagement when you bring it to the House. So some of these issues, the mover of the motion, you need to articulate most of these issues that we need to deal with institutionally. Why in the immediate, we ensure that we communicate to them to remind them to confer to the office of the speaker uh, the uh, title of uh, GCON. Thank you. That there shall be a national assembly for the federation which shall consist of a senate and the House of Representatives. He never said that one is superior to the other. So, Mr. Speaker, fellow honorable colleagues, why adopting all the submissions of my honorable colleagues, I'm also strongly adding my voice that we should support this motion so that this will not continue to repeat itself. Thank you. Stage, I would like to read. Subject to Article 2 of this warrant, the numbers of persons appointed to the different ranks of the orders in any calendar year shall not exceed eight. In the case of Grand Commander, which is what is in contest here, in the case of Grand Commander, two, as respect to the order of the Federal Republic, and 10, as respect to the order of Niger. What it simply means is that for GCON, for every calendar year, it shall not exceed two in line with the National Honors Act. So if the Senate President has been given one, it therefore means we are going to ask in our resolution as well that the CJN shall relinquish his own for the Speaker not necessarily Tadujin, but for any speaker of the House of Representatives until we amend this act. You cannot exceed two in line with this act. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think it has nothing to do with the, with the act. If, the, if, if it, this is what is stated in the act, it's for the people who are doing that to consider. And the order of protocol that we are referring to was approved by both chambers to place us to where Mr. Speaker is. And so if you are asking, and if you are doing, that just like it's automatic for Mr. President, the moment he assumed duty as President of the Republic of Nigeria and the Vice President they have, they are all know that it's automatic. It is not also out of order to have the Speaker and the Senate President in the other category automatically. Please, Mr. my brother, I think it's time for us to respect the institution, to do the right thing that would promote us and give us our placement in the, in the, the committee. Thank you very much, sir. The House and the Head of Government Business. Ordinarily, I should be speaking to defend 
the government. But I also Is Orabu Isosa on the floor? I also have a responsibility and duty to correct the government when it is doing something that is not right. Fortunately, we have a government that listens and a president that listens. I want to especially appreciate my colleagues. Without party restriction or consideration or any consideration whatsoever, have unanimously agreed that there are several amendments we need to make both in the Constitution and in the Honors Act in order to correct historical injustices and administrative miscarriage of responsibilities. It is clear that we are not just talking about the current occupants of these positions, no. We are talking about putting things in the right perspective. And that what is good for the goat is also good for the ram. I use that because my people understand that better than goose and gander. Mr. Speaker, even when you look at it, that the Speaker of the House gets the same honor as the Deputy Speaker of the Senate, there is a miscarriage there. They are not on the same level, Deputy Senate President. In fact, the honor given to the Deputy Senate President is higher than that of the Deputy Speaker. So if we are going to deal with it holistically, the Senate President and the Speaker should have exactly the same thing. And the Deputy Senate President and the Deputy Speaker of the House should have the same. And we should amend the motion to say we are calling on the government not to just take the light and pride of correcting this error now, but to go back into the past and also correct it to other Senate Presidents, uh, Speakers, and Deputy Speakers, and Deputy Senate uh, presidents, so that we can at least set a path of fair play, of social justice, of fairness to one another, and giving honor to whom it is due. Finally, Mr. Speaker, because I know the media will say, look at them, instead of talking about uh, food, instead of talking about strike, instead of talking about roads, they are talking about, we are not talking about titles for ourselves. Some of us, and many of us already have enough titles. We are talking about the respect for the institution. We are here for four years, we don't know who will be here tomorrow. It may even be some of those who would leave the real message and talk about other issues. So I want to appeal that the issues here, they have to do with history, with tradition, with correcting past injustices and miscarriage of re recognition, and constitutional order of things. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I believe it is not too late to do this. We have a job to do, to build and consolidate and enshrine the quality of both houses, very clearly. Um, but we also have a job to do, to assist the government to do the right thing when they need to do the right thing. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. motion. My essence of standing to make my contribution is to remind not only the chamber, but whoever that is involved in such a process, the sacrosanctity of the House of Representatives. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, you will agree with me that democracy was actually defined and derived from two ancient Greek city-state words, demos and kratia. Demos meaning people, kratia signifying rule of all by the people. At the very beginning of democracy, Your Excellency, Honorable Members, people gather in a marketplace on market days to discuss the affairs of their society and communities, regardless of their gender, regardless of their age, regardless of their race, regardless of anything you can think of. 
as population grow, there is a need for that particular number to be reduced to family level. As time goes on today, we have what we call constituency. Your Excellency, throughout the history of democracy, there has never been anything like Senate, but Congress. And Congress actually determines the fate of every country, which is House of Representatives. So, Mr. Speaker, honorable members, we should remind them, as earlier suggested by our senior colleague, Honorable Abdul Mumini Jibrin from Kano, that we are not in confrontation, but actually reminding the committee to do the needful by not treating us different from the Senate counterpart, because we are not either subservient of the Senate or we are not holding brief for the Senate and we are not being delegated by the Senate. As far as my contribution is concerned, this is it. Thank you so much, and we remind them. Thank you, sir. Amendment. Thank you. To amend that we do constitute an ad hoc committee to be chaired by the leader of the House, to be co-chaired by the minority leader of the House, and all zona caucus members of the six geopolitical zones to be members of that ad hoc committee and any other person deemed fit by the leader here, by the presiding officer, to holistically look at the issue and do justice to the issue and report back to the House within four weeks. I so move, Mr. Speaker. ...to report to the, back to the House within two weeks. Two weeks may be late because it's not known to us when this ceremony will take place, so that we don't come uh, giving a report that possibly uh, would be a wasted uh, period of time and for public funds. So my take is that that prayer should be amended, maybe to give this report within uh, three days or, or four days. Maximum, sir. Honorable, are you... Are you in Nigeria. I'm from Lagos State, the state of aquatic splendor. I hereby second... This amendment, you say aye. Those against, you say nay. That is all of it. Any more amendments? My name is Dr. Adebayo Adepodru. I represent the hardworking people of Ibarakpa Central and Ibarakpa North Federal Constituency of the Paysetter State. Mr. Speaker, I am from Oyo State. Um, having listened to the submissions of my distinguished uh, fellow colleagues, I think it would not be out of place for us to outrightly go ahead and amend this motion to reject the um, honors of CFR at this point. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just to appeal and show reason why things should change. It's not like we are trying to confront him or to say what he did is not appreciated. So I would want to kindly ask you to withdraw that uh, prayer, please. Mr. Speaker, with all due respect, sir, I go ahead and reject uh, and withdraw the prayer in honor of um, you and Mr. President. So, thank you very much. So we put the question, those in support of this motion as amended, she say aye. Those against, she say nay. That is all of it. This motion is referred to an ad hoc committee to be chaired by the House leader and uh, membership of the committee will include all the six zonal caucus leaders and the two regional leaders of North and South and uh, any other person that uh, the committee may deem fit to co-opt. Thank you. The next uh, motion